Hey guys, so today we're going to be playing Happy Saint Sheol. Uh, this is just the demo. The full game isn't actually out yet. Um, I figured we could hop into the demo and see how it goes. You know, if we enjoy the demo, maybe come back when the full game releases. Alright, and let's just gonna hop right into it. As a, um, as a warning, as a bit of warning, this is a horror game. All of the, like, you know, the mostly gory bits I will, you know, censor out. Uh, just so it's good for you too. Um, I hope you all enjoy it. We're gonna hop right on into it. Uh, I'm just gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna change it to. There we go. Yes. And. Uh, it's been a little bit of a while since I recorded for the channel. I'm gonna try to record more often. Um, this is more of like a read, so I am gonna read this. Oh, uh, the pre-dawn sky was to get dusky, part partly due to the heavy metal particles polluting the air. The inside of the station was packed with crowds of people coming and going. I wondered how much longer we'll be plagued by this heavy fog, a thick haze that has shrouded the world around me since I left early this morning. Nope. Despite being midsummer, their ever present gloom meant everyone around me was being bundled up in thick overcoats. The unexpected chill in the air left me shivering on the platform in my lighter clothing as I waited for the train's arrival. The voice of the train conductor reaches my ears from somewhere nearby, cutting through the somber atmosphere. The station in the capital is not a place you can stay in for very long. The dust in the air from the cold left my voice hoarse and dry, and my body quickly froze from the blustery chill. And with so many people rushing here and there, I found myself worrying about potentially missing my train if I didn't stay sharp. So I hurried along in an attempt to make sure that didn't happen. A tragedy happened about 2,000 years ago that turned heaven and earth upside down. In the blink of an eye, the world found itself at the mercy of a series of natural disasters and a pandemic later known as Pestis. Earth's population were unable to survive in the decay and corruption left in its wake. Following Pestis, one man discovered a strange mark on his body that had appeared out of nowhere. Whether due to the mark or not, he received a message from God along with the power and knowledge to restore the world to how it once was. From then on, everyone born in this new world was marked by the same scar, which came to be known as the stigmata. It said one power can be seen in another and marks on their body. At least, or at least that's what I heard from the town elder, so who knows how much truth there is to that. At any rate, I grew up in a small communal settlement in the most northern part of the six great continents following the reconstruction of civilization. Unlike in the capital, where pollution makes it impossible to tell the passage of day and night, the sun always shone brightly over the village I was raised in. The resident of a wasteland, this desolate would most likely quickly perish. The last heir of a long-forgotten civilization, but also... The descendant of a small tribe from some nameless scrap of land in the middle of nowhere. That's me. I left that village, which had grown tiresome in its familiarity for the capital, a faraway place I'd always dreamed of. Ooh. I found it impossible to befriend the folks in my town, who all looked the same and shared the same boring opinions. Not to say that I was an only child, but the age disparity between my siblings and I was simply too great. Either they were old enough to have children of their own or literally ba literal babies themselves. I was the only young man of marriageable age. The rest have long since lost their minds or various parts of their bodies over the years or simply not take capable of taking on a leadership position. And so the folks in the town wanted to place the future of the village on my seemingly capable shoulders. While I fully understand why they came to this decision, it wasn't enough to convince me to rot away in this godforsaken place listening to the elders' incessant preaching. Surrounded by grandpas and grandmas, aunts and uncles, family members upon family members, and a variable sea of relatives, well, 
the folks here are so deeply immersed in tradition that it's impossible for them to embrace anything new like tepid water festering in a well that small village was all i knew growing up and it wasn't long before i grew sick and tired of being constantly surrounded by the same old faces i've grown bored of waking up every morning in a cramped warehouse wondering if today will be the day that the prophet will appear go to the capital those words plagued my every waking so <sighs> over the past seven years and yet i had nothing to show for it other than the well-worn pages of a book history of the great northern continent and countless wasted days and weeks and months if i'd been in the capital i could have bought a house got married and settled down to start building a happy family life with a partner who I chose to spend the rest of my life with instead of somebody decided for me by the village elders. Each time I was forced to hold the shriveled up hand of another old geezer on his deathbed, I felt almost suffocated by the thought that I too might spend my entire life rotting in a stagnant hole like this one. And that even after death my body would be cremated alongside my brothers and sisters, my soul laying to rest for eternity in a mass grave surrounded by the same folks i've been stuck with while alive that's not very nice dang how much reading is there then one day i was blessed by a miracle due to the brutal heat and humidity our crops were withering to nothing and we were insanely busy trying to deal with it which is when our mysterious visitor suddenly appeared he was a dark-skinned man with bright blue eyes his cheeks speckled with multitudes of stigmata he asked if i'd come with him to work at the temple in the capital and i gladly took him up on his offer i honestly felt like jumping for joy this is my chance my one and only chance to escape from the suffocatingly small town which is what ultimately led me to move into the capital what's next Ooh. but as i was saying i figured i was like mm, maybe i'll play something different this time because honestly i had a good time playing playing all um, nipper par and stuff but um you know maybe it's time to play something new the train headed to the capital was incredibly crowded luckily i was able to find an empty seat almost immediately affording me the opportunity to set my heavy looks down only to accidentally knock over someone else's belongings with my own i heard a small gasp the other person was clearly as surprised as i was I turned to see a girl much smaller than me, enough so that I wonder how she had the strength to lug those giant bags around. I reflectively snatched up my own luggage and took a few steps back. With her shoulders slightly bunched up around her ears, she glanced between the seat and myself before finally sitting down. The girl with the light pink hair, her cheeks flushed, a bright red, kept her gaze averted toward the ground. Unsure if she was still concerned about what had happened, I let her in my sights through the ensuing chaos on the train. Yeah, I figured out like I seen this demo, it looked really interesting. Maybe I'll play it on the channel and see how it goes. Oh what's out of World Award Sound of a nearby train signal announced our arrival and the flood of passengers surged toward the door. Just before the crowd swept me away, our eyes met for a split second. With a small nod, I just barely caught her lips move. Probably a word of thanks. I found myself forced along by the tide of clearly very busy people with places to go. But yeah, I figured this would be pretty interesting. So far, it's a lot of reading, but I don't really mind that. Ooh. I guess this is the temple. There was a long line in front of the building I eventually wound up at. It seemed to be a checkpoint of sorts. Seeing the person in the cramped room on the other side of the window dressed in monk's robes, I was momentarily reminded of the sacrament of pen penance. I stood there silently as their eyes scanned me from head to toe, ordering me to wait. The inspector left, me left the cramped room before being replaced a few moments later by a mild-mannered woman. Unlike the previous inspector, this brown-haired lady, this brown-haired lady was not dressed in robes. Oh, what she look like? Oh, she's adorable. You must be new here. What's your name? Kellen Cat, was it? My, what an interesting name. What would you like me to call you? 
Sure, we'll just go with the we'll just go with the default for this. Spell what you want to be called. Sure. Now let's see here. Ah, uh, yes, your name is on the list of arrivals for today. The lady with the sweet sound of voice handed me a piece of paper in a well-practiced manner. I caught a glimpse of her stigmata under her sleeve on her writing hand. Who exactly is she? Can you show me the stigmata on your body? I confidently show her the palms of my hands, and she responds with a warm smile. <laughs> You're pretty confident, huh? That's a good trait to have. Though for a boy with hair as black as yours, I'm surprised you don't have more. Is two not that many? Here in the capital, youngsters with black hair like yours tend to wield considerable power. Which is probably why they are few and far between. Really? I've had black hair my entire life, and this is the first I've heard of this. It's just a silly belief some people have. Folks living in the capital tend to view the world through a lens of gossip and bias. You could easily become a citywide sensation overnight. Well then, Kelmcap of the health department, welcome. I'm sorry, I'm part of the of the what department now? Confident and funny, you've got it all. I'm sure you'll figure out of everything you need to know during your first day here. You must be exhausted after your long journey. Make sure you get a good night's rest. The dorms are located beneath this building. It's pretty hard to get lost, but think you can make it on your own? I'm pretty good at finding my way around. Thank you. Are you some kind of administrator here? <laughs> I'm just an old lady. This is where we say goodbye, Belle. Good, best of luck in your future. That's when I too took my first step into the underworld. Alright. Ooh, I guess I think this is the start of the thing. Guess we're about to find out. But yeah, that's how this looked me. Anyways, this is what I thought I played in the video. I'm pretty cute. Oh, this is a little intro thing. It's also pretty cute, I'm gonna be real. Okay, okay. That's the girl we saw on the train. She's adorable. I don't know who that is. I like her. Her last name is Alternata. All these characters are, are honestly adorable. Adorable characters. Is he floating? This this game looks like it's gonna be really cute. But it's a horror game, so I guess we'll see. intro thing I guess that's supposed to be like a oh it's kind of loud I guess it's supposed to be like a an introduction to all the characters you guys want to find out I wish I could make the little box bigger ooh I take a step forward. My foot sinks into the wet ground. Penetrated. Pretending not to notice, I kept going, dislodging the corner of my shoe from the mud. The more I walk, the heavier my feet get. I let out a breath I've been holding in. Pain intense like my lungs are being twisted about. My head is soaked too, despite there being no rain. I don't know how long I've run. Eventually, someone grabs my sweat-soaked hand. I grip the hand and return and pull on it more firmly. The girl, who is also out of breath, calls my name. Ooh. 
what's going on guess we're gonna find out eek huh snapping out of my reverie i frantically look around trying to get a read on the situation yes this is the temple dorm that i've been staying in from now on i wasted no time fall asleep after putting away my things and in front of me it, it's a cute girl I can't process any of this. Uh, um, what? Well, are y yeah? They they said new workers are to assemble in their departments in thirty minutes. Hmm. Oh, I see. The girl hurries out of the room before I can even say hello. And so I've been left alone here in my room. I hear foot footsteps pattering away down the hall. A little bland looking room. A little bland looking, but that's okay. I look out the window. The sun is already up. What time is it? I start searching my things, which are still a complete mess for my habit. All who come of age are considered adults and are given the right to start working. If I lived in the capital, my coming of age ceremony would have been a year ago. Still, as of today, I was a respectable member of society. The first thing I noticed upon coming here was how my appearance was a little unusual compared to the people here. Everyone in my homeland had similar skin and hair color, but people in the capital all seemed paler and slenderer. By my standards, they looked much more unusual than me. In any case, whenever someone passed me, they looked at me in surprise. I guess I'm the unusual one here. The girl before did the same thing. That's weird. I feel like I've seen her before. Maybe. Hmm. Have we met somewhere? Strange. I'm feeling deja vu towards her. I can't get rid of the feeling. Maybe I'll figure it out if we meet again. I head outside my room, which is still dark. Alright. So we're in the dormitory. Okay, okay. We're about to hit you. Oh, I got to pick. I'm going to go to work. But yeah, I figured I'd try this. Oh, is this our character? Great time to pump myself up for another day. Our character is pretty cute, honestly. Yeah, I guess we're about to um, figure out what we're supposed to be doing. So we're in the temple lobby right now. I really like the art for this. It's very, like, paint-esque. I had further in where everything is just as dark, weird, and open. A door, a very specific stench attacks my nose. It's like they covered up the musty smell of old wallpaper and dust with a deodorizer or something. I even catch a whiff of rotten food. It's actually a little difficult for me to handle. I can feel it in my bones. This place is different from the others. I'm not surprised it's cordoned off from everywhere else like it is. I go inside as a girl with a small friend quickly turns around at the sound of the door opening. She scowls and scampers nosily over to me. What's with you? You're late. And your clothes? Is this supposed to be some kind of joke? What? What's wrong with my clothes? Why do you have all those strange decorations all over your habit? Because I, I thought they were cool. I was even supposed to wear that stuffy outfit every single day anyway. S stuffy? You're about to cross a line with your frivolous games, you know. Who in the world are you anyway? They said we'd be getting someone accepted to the magic department on the waiver. That black on black is all I can see. What? What? Her incredibly rude behavior takes me aback. Just a little as I suddenly catch a strong smell of perfume behind me. A blonde girl appears out of nowhere, gets close to me, and grabs hold of my arm. Oh, come on, fighting on his first day? Please don't bully him too much, alright? <sighs> He's, isn't he? I read us. Something's been bothering me ever since I got on that train. At first, I figured it was just a difference in pronunciation or accent, but apparently, the language they use here in the capital is fairly different than the one where I came from. I can still mix still make some of it out but when people talk quiet quickly and quietly like that i can't keep up in fact they just mentioned their names but i couldn't quite make them out now i used to way pronounce things here well it'll probably come to me to come to me the more time we spend together for now i remember them as chairwoman and blondie that will get me through this conversation at least but if i miss here something important later on it can be pretty bad on my end for now, I can sort of tell that that short, sh the short chairwoman and the tall blondie are friends. Chairwoman is ra ranting and raving as blondie smiles, pats me on back, and takes a step away. For an instant, for some reason, that gives me an awful chill. Anyway, isn't this supposed to be where orientation is? Are you newbies too? What? Who are you calling a newbie? 
We've been here a little longer than you, so we have seniority. I'm just here because this girl said she didn't want to go alone. She pulls a very pink girl over. I didn't even notice her before. The new girl stands there awkwardly in front of me. She heaves a little sigh that sounds anxious and keeps her eyes down, only occasionally glancing up at me. And once again, I can't help but feel out like I've seen her before. Um, this morning did... Anyway, yeah, I'm, I'm her big sis. Wait, you look nothing alike. That's because we're stepsisters. Ah, <sighs> sigh. <sighs> Why'd I say that? Hey, would you say something? I know you can at least introduce yourself. I'm, I'm Maya Elbeth. Pleased to meet you. R right. <laughs> Maya's all scared. Is it because she's talking to a man? That's adorable. No, no. I told you she's always been like this. Even back home, remember? Er, uh, my name is Kellen Cat. Thanks for this morning. I mean, I guess I'm older, but uh, pleased to meet you nonetheless. It's only by one year anyway. The difference is nothing when it comes to working here. Both of you are essentially babies. That's a rather unusual name. Hey, Belle, did you know that... But know what it is we do here before you came? What do you do here? That apparently struck, struck Blondie is pretty funny. Since she starts cackling, mouth wide open, and gives an exasperated sniff. Are you sure you're not in the wrong place? That's not what I meant. I was told this was where I'd get an explanation. Hey, I know this kid's a riot, but just explain to him, to him already. Ugh, fine. i only say it once. So got it? Maya, make sure you listen to this again. As everyone chuckles, Maya, the only one with an uneasy expression nods along with me. During the explanation, I get distracted by how Blondie, who stood next to me, keeps looking at me and laughing. In essence, this is how it is. This is the typical. This is the temple. This te This is... This is temple. This temple is called Saint Sheol. It was established in the center of Curia to save people from pests using powers granted by God. Each of the six continents possesses a similar temple administered by the cardinals of each reason. Here, Saint Sheol is divided into four departments, each under the purview of a bishop. The magic department, the academic department, the health department, and the cleanup department. Of six temples, Saint Sheol is the only one with an established department for cleanup, which is what we're assigned to. We're essentially a cleanup clue. That makes sure the nation's cogs keep turning. After a week of training, we'll be acknowledged as official members of the clergy. I wanted to make sure I understood everything properly, but it didn't seem like they answered me outright. Without a choice, I save my questions for later and try to organize all the new information in my head. I see. Well, thanks. Are Maya and I the only new workers today? This apartment is always understaffed, but we get new people at the end of, the, of every month. Little by little on a regular basis, that sort of thing. Oh, did you want to meet the other boys and girls? Don't worry about that. You'll be able to soon. I've got plenty of friends to introduce you to. Hear the door open again. The two of them break off the auto conversation they were lapsing into. Carolyn's face scrunches up at the side of him. Oh, why? If it isn't secure it. Aren't you busy? What are you doing here? Blondie approaches him first, but the boy doesn't even spare a glance for her. Instead, he stare, sets a stare directly at me. Wait, I thought only new members could come in here. That's what I want to ask. Why are you here? The bishop is unable to come today. She's a busy woman. I'm just here in her place. They don't seem like they're friends. Chairwoman glares at him for cutting her off, but purposely doesn't say anything in, part, in response. Their conversation seems like it's over already. The one blondie called Sakura comes over to us and looks me up and down. Ever done this kind of work before? There's no point in asking that. He literally didn't know anything about it. In fact, I just finished telling him what it is we do here at the temple. Sakura, would you be so kind as to show these two the proverbial ropes? What? That bishop left this task in your hands, didn't she? I highly doubt you were planning on pushing such an important, crucial job onto us, hmm? Yes, that's right. We have to get to work ourselves. Thank you for this, temp assistant bishop. The boy says nothing as the two girls go past him towards the door. Hey, 
that one's my little sister, so you better do a good job teaching her. One of them makes a father of the man before exiting the room. The other casually turns to us and waves before leaving. I wave back, not really thinking about it, but a moment later I cut my senses and turn around. The boy is still here and he's got his eyes narrowed into severe glare. Finally, he heaves a sign just for us to come with him. So I think I'll play this for like a good hour. I'm not really too sure how long this demo is. As we exit the stairs onto an upper passage, the sound of our footfalls along the floor becomes awfully loud. Does everyone here wear boots or with heels or something? Even outside, the sun is still below the horizon. The gaudy stained glass on the hallway's walls. On the hallway's wall reflects the dull light of the sky, coloring the entire building with a pure light blue tone. It almost looks like a sunrise. What time is it even? Does the sun not rise in the capital or something? It's the polar night right now. The polar night? It's the time of the year when the sun doesn't rise during the day, so it's always nighttime. Really? Maya, you're pretty smart, huh? Does that mean it's going to be it's going to stay this cold? I suppose. Do you not like being cold, Bill? I come from a warm place, so I can't quite get used to it. Wait, did you just call me Bill? Well, I, um, I like calling people nicknames, so would you rather or not? No, not at all. I like it. Feel free to call me anytime you want. Oh, good. Um, secure it, right? If it's alright with you, would you mind if I called you Red? Yes, I'd mind quite a bit. Uh -huh. Hey, look how hard Maya is trying to talk to you. You could at least be a little nicer. Without turning around, he takes out a binder. Papers inside were written using a typewriter. All in were designated places arranged from simple addresses to nonsensical sequences and numbers. Several of them were checked off and ready. Record the work you each perform in here. It's fine to simply observe since it's your first day, but starting tomorrow you'll have to actually do the work and write it in here. What kind of work is it? Secure says nothing to us instead, quickening his steps and turning the corner going past the checkpoint. One look at the white rosary on my neck and the examiner silently lets us through. Hey, I asked what kind of work we're doing. Trailing behind him, I asked again. He coughs nervously. Make him mad or something? Slam before leaving through the inch. Secure pulls out a hand cart. It clatters loudly on the floor. I'll switch to clean the class. Plus, a few sacks are piled upon it. Take this, he says in a rather high voice. As though his vocal cords haven't been affected by puberty yet. Part of the cleanup department, our job is to sound and the work areas of other departments that get dirty from exterminating evil spirits, clean up and deal with any reported corpses, and to exterminate the pests that have been growing in number recently. We also perform pres pre preservative treatment on dead bodies, assist in their funerals, and get and get rid of the loss and trust away any troubling work like that. The kind that needs manpower falls on us. The Lost? You don't know about them? After I repeat the unfamiliar word, thinking about secure stubs turns back around to us. He doesn't reply with an answer. I look at him blankly. After which he sh his gaze shifts to Meyer. Apparently she knows about this. I'm the only one who doesn't. Seeing that she does, secure shakes his head and starts walking again. You know how people possess sacred power? Yeah, the stuff needed for the stigmata to appear, right? Yes, it's also called God's only mercy to man. That's just how incomprehensible this power is to people. But what do you think happens to this great sacred power when its vessel dies? I'm guessing it doesn't go away? Correct. Back home, the Jerusalem's cremate people immediately after they die. Instead of looking upon the faces of the dead, we gaze at the blazing flames that enduring the distinct odor of burning flesh and anger about to the fire. I was never happy with that, so one day I asked the big man, the big man in the village about it. I just realized now that he said something very similar. Human corpses shouldn't be returned to heaven. Couldn't be returned to heaven without immediately burning their bodies. Otherwise, their lean and resentment will remain in this world, and they will become monsters that crawl along the ground. The hunks of flesh controlled by that sacred power have no consciousness or memories. 
They either continue moving until they run out of energy or, more likely, they attack people. They don't have consciousness, but they still have instincts or something like it. It's up to us to retrieve and deal with them. We never have enough people for it. Essentially, we take people in without even checking their number of signata or their status in society. The worst of the world doesn't take kindly to us because of it. Since you two are still in training, then you won't be directly sent to the pestis. And say you'll probably be doing simple jobs like cleaning. Secure continues to walk as he explains his voice flat and disinterested. The cold terminology travel tra pierces my ears as a travel of dark path. I'm not completely sure I have an accurate understanding of the terms and explanations I've heard. Next to me, Maya's gait, Maya's gait has been growing more and more unsteady. Thinking her feet are tired, I look at her and worry only to see that she's shaking her face as white as a sheet. Doubting exhaustion is the only thing at play, I purposely raise my voice. By the way you describe it, the cleanup department are just slaves of the temple. Perhaps, but the work is necessary to ensure the smooth operation of the country. Alright guys, I think I'm going to leave it here. Um, we'll see how this does. If it does well, then I'll pick up again right here at the, the court, the residential building. Um, I hope y'all enjoy it so far. And I hope to see you all again soon. Um, save real quick. And then I'm just going to leave it here. Uh, hope y'all enjoyed today's video. And I'd like to thank y'all for tuning in. And I'll see you all next time.